praise you, God. Praise you. Hallelujah. Let's continue to praise our good, good God. Thank you, Lord. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. From the rising of the sun till it's down, Lord, you deserve to be praised. The word that come into my mind is to declare his work. Glory to you, Father Lord. Thank you. Thank you for the wonderful works that you have done. Thank you for your creations. For that pointed to all your glory, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you for your faithfulness, Father. That pointed to your works. That glorify you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for sending your Son, Lord Jesus Christ, to die for us. And because of your love, today we receive, we receive the joy of salvation. Thank you, Lord. And we declare, Father, your glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Let's continue to be in this attitude of prayers as we prepare for our Holy Communion today. I just want to thank God for the wonderful worship today. Yes, praise you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. As I prepare my, um, my preparation for today, uh, last, uh, I mean, on Monday. So, yeah, <clears throat> something, um, not that I have a problem or what, but as I was pondering and seeking the Lord for my preparations, and this song uh, came into my mind, which is, uh, what a friend we have in Jesus. And yeah, so I was thinking, hey, <clears throat> this is a song that impressed me as I prepared. And, I, 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 and, and true enough, on Thursday, as uh, Angeline sent me the, the, the song, this is the song that is, uh, is selected, you see. So I praise God. And it's like, um, wow, what a comfort. And God is so, so real as it's just like, wow. It's, God is so close to us and sometimes we don't even realize, right? Yeah, so God is good. Yeah, amen. Can I invite you all to turn to um, John 15 verse 13 to uh, 15. <clears throat> Let me read it out. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call yours, no longer I call you servant. For the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. And, amen. And Jesus, in his great love, laid down his life for us and he called us his friends and he's our king but yet he humbled himself and gave us this privilege and invite us into this intimacy and having this relationship with him praise you jesus and in one condition that if we remain in him he will remain in us amen just a short testimony. Um, last week, I attended a funeral. Um, one of my relatives from Sava. So uh, he, uh, he had cancer, and doctor told him that he had three months to live. And during his last day, uh, final moments, uh, he was admitted to hospital. And before that, there were a group of um, 
um, fellow Christians from uh, UAJ1 FGA Chinese Church to minister to them. And also um, his kids is also joining uh, their ministry. And, but the father is not a, a, a Christian yet. But somehow uh, throughout the, 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 the time of sickness, right? So I think they minister to, to him and on the final moment, uh, just as usual, casual chatting while the wife sending him to the hospital. In the car, they were chatting like normal and when he almost reaching the, the hospital, suddenly his eyes turned blank and he said that uh, he can't see anything and where, he, where is he now? So the wife said, what, you know, uh, asked for the description and he said something like a white light. Something. So the wife said, why don't you follow the light? Yeah. And go in peace. <clears throat> and yeah, true enough that he followed the white light. And a moment later, <clears throat> um, uh, yeah, he had his last moment. And when the doctor, when he reached to, um, when the doctor attended him, he already gone. So I believe that um, God is real, heaven is real. And I believe that um, he received the salvations because of his belief in God during his final moment. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you. Thank you. So have you... And this thing, have you ever thought that one day, how are we going to end our life? I know this is uh, something very negative, but I'm not sure. Have you ever played in your mind that, how are we going to end our life one day? You know, but this kept playing in my mind um, since young, because of, I'm scared to die, you see. But the thing is, I believe it's not easy to know that we are going to die because we try to avoid all this and try to be um, look into the positive most of the time. But we have a friend, we have a good friend called Jesus who knows that this is his mission to die for us since young, right? Extinct revealed to him layer of layer of wisdom and knowledge and he knows that he's going to die and not only that he's going to die but he's going to do it joyfully for us because he knows that this is the mission that's sent by the Father in heaven and he gave it all so as we come to the Holy Communion today, I want to bring our focus into this perspective to imagine the torment that Jesus has to go through and He went through it victoriously, faithfully, obediently and for the sake of love. Yes, and he gave it all up until the night in Gethsemane. And he's <clears throat> arrested early in the next morning. He perfectly carried out the plan for which he had been born into this world. As his time nears, his anguish and his emotions, his preparation to that moment of betrayal, torture, and also crucifixions, till the moment he said, It is finished. But yeah, what a friend we have in Jesus that who lay his life to die for us sinners. So as we come to the table of communion today, let's remember Jesus as we prepare the emblems in our hand. Our friend who laid down his life for us, who invite us to find rest in him and who understands our every needs. 
even a song that he has chosen is so comforting. And this bread and cup symbolize his body and blood given for us. Let's prepare. Reading from 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23 to 24. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And let's eat and let partake together. In verse 25, in the same way after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And let's drink it together. Praise you, Lord. Praise you. Let's sing one more time this song. What a friend we have in Jesus. And as I invite the worship team uh, to prepare, I would also like to invite those who have needs today <coughs> um, to commit your heart to the Lord as He is a faithful God and He always listens and always close to us. Yeah, and you feel that um, God is calling you to step up to the front. If you have any needs, just commit, just cry out to Him. Praise you, Jesus. Let's sing the song one more time. What a friend we have in Jesus.
I invite those who have needs today to remain standing as we focus unto our dear Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Father Lord, I want to give you thanks for today. Truly, O oh Lord, that you deserve all the glory. Thank you, Father. We know that you are closer than we can imagine, O oh Lord. Even the small, small things, Father, in our life, Father, you pay attention to it and you demand the goodness, the righteousness and the awareness to you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your holiness, O oh Father. Thank you, Lord, as we work towards this closeness and this intimacy with you, O oh Father. Forgive us, O oh Lord, as we are not perfect, O oh Lord. Sometimes we are good and sometimes we are down, Father. But yet, Lord, your grace and mercy is always ready, Father, to embrace us, Lord, because we know, Father, this is the hope we have, Father, in you, Lord. Praise you. Even today, for those who are standing, Father, you are close, close to their hearts, Father, because Holy Spirit dwells in them, Father. And I pray, O oh, Father, even as you release, Father, this power into, into their life, Father, for these transformations, Lord, for this, any issues they have in their heart, any problems, any obstacles, Father, Lord, I ask, Father, first of all, to open up their hearts for you, Lord, to have this faith, Father, to receive you. Let the Holy Spirit that dwells in them, in their hearts, Father, not only to be the residence, but also be the presidents in their heart, Father. Let they uplift you, Father, the Holy Spirit in them, Father. As they open up their hearts, Father. Lord, I pray, O oh Father, I declare, O oh Father, victory over their life. I declare, O oh Father, all the things that does not belong into their life will stumble, Father, in your name, in Jesus' name. Praise you, Lord. Praise you. Touch them, Father, as they surrender fully and wholly into you. Let your presence be with them and dwell in them, Father. Not just for today, Lord, but it will remain as you replenish whatever that is lacking in their heart, Father. Each of them the soul that's standing here today, Father, is precious to you, Lord. It's matter to you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So, Lord, as what they desire in their hearts, as what is righteous, Father, I pray, O oh Lord, that we will fulfill it, Lord. Not their will, but your will, Lord. And in Jesus' most precious name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, musician team. Praise the Lord. Can we give them a big applause? Praise the Lord. Good morning. New life. Is your life transformed? Are you feel excited for today? Praise you. Praise God. Thank you for coming. Thank you for joining us today because every single seat that is filled up, it matters, right? Let's encourage one another. Let's stand up and, 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 and you know, say a hi or good to see you guys today, you know. Let's welcome one another. Praise the Lord. 
I hope you are blessed to be in the house of the Lord today. And today, we have a special um, young prayer invitees to help me for this prayer item. We are going to pray for the travelers. So I will pass my time to Joanne. Good morning, everyone. My name is Joanne. Today, I'll be praying for all those who are traveling this week. May I invite all those who are traveling to stand? Let us bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you with grateful hearts, thanking you for your constant care and protection. Today, we lift up all those who are traveling. We ask that you watch over them and keep them safe throughout their journeys. Guide the travelers, drivers, pilots, and all those responsible for their travel, travel, ensuring that everything will be smooth as planned. Lord, fill their heart with peace and confidence, knowing that you are with them every step of the way. Let their travels be smooth and their paths be clear. Grant them good health, joy, and opportunities to share your love with others they meet along the way. We also pray that you bring them safely back to their homes and loved ones, refreshed and renewed by their experiences. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Thank you, Joanne. Well done. Next, can I uh, invite uh, any newcomers today? If there's any, can I invite you all to, to, to raise your hand? We want to acknowledge you. Yes, we have one. Praise the Lord. Come, uh, can I invite you to stand as we pray for you? Yeah, let's stretch our hand to our newcomers, our visitors. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we want to give you thanks, Father. Praise to you, Lord, for bringing uh, uh, newcomers into our midst. We are grateful, we are joyful, Lord, and we also hope, Father, she will be blessed, Father, by, by um, today's service, Father. And even uh, as for whatever reasons that he, she is here, Lord, we believe, Father, this is through your divine uh, appointment and your perfect timing, Lord. So we want to bless her, Father, as you know, Father, what is this, her desire of her heart, Lord. Let today's message speak to her, Father, uh, uh, intimately, Father, and you will guide over uh, her path, Father, and you bless her. Uh, in all this, we pray in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Yeah. Okay, I have another surprise. Yeah. Okay, next move to tithes and offering. Before that, uh, as you all know, there are a few options to for tithes and giving your tithes and offering. One is from our offering box, the blue color box at the corner there, and also QR code, uh, either through QR Pay or Touch and Go. And for this item, I would like to invite another young, uh, yeah, new prayer invitees. Uh, yeah, come, Joel. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. My name is Joel, and I will be praying for the tithes and offerings today. I invite everyone to bow their heads as I pray. Dear God, thank you for being our source and provider. You give us everything we need as we bring our tithes and offerings to you today. We do so with joyful hearts. We know that you have trusted us with these resources to help your kingdom and to bless others. 
We pray for wisdom and good choices in how this money is used. Let it help our church share your love, spread the gospel, and take care of people in need, both in our church and everywhere else. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Joel. Praise the Lord. I just have these thoughts uh, of calling them to pray yesterday night, uh, about 9 30. <laughs> and I call, and true enough, they are so obedient to. Yeah. Uh, Joanne and Joel, you all can go up now. <laughs> Thanks. Good job. Come again next time. Okay, let's go to our announcement. We have uh, quite a number of announcements. So, uh, Chinese service as usual, uh, 3 p.m. today. Pastor will, uh, Victoria will be the speaker. It will be in our uh, sanctuary today. Okay, next, uh, we will have our Wednesday prayer service uh, online, Zoom, and also our Saturday prayer watch um, at our sanctuary, 8.30 a.m., huh? 1st June. Okay, move on. Uh, yep. Hello. Yeah. Uh, condolences. Um, the church would like to extend our condolences to Sister Sharon Wong from uh, Gethsemane CG on the passing away of her sister, Madam uh, Jenny Wong, on Monday. Yeah. So uh, Sister Sharon Wong and also uh, her family would like to thank all of you all for the love, give, support, and also prayers during these reasons of bereavement. Next, uh, from Kingsman, everyone can share the gospel. This is another seminar uh, by Nelson Junadi on 1st June, Saturday, 9.30 a.m. So it's in Hall 1 of this church. So if, uh, for further information, you all can uh, ask or look for a uh, brother uh, <laughs> Our dear brother Alan. Yeah. <laughs> I thought of Alan Jackson. <laughs> okay, moving forward. Next. Okay, for this item, I would like to invite uh, C. Simon. Well, it's our great delight and uh, joy to announce the appointment of Sister Angie Tam to be the head of uh, beautification department for our church. So can I have uh, Sister Angie? And also, um, yeah, next please. Sister Yen, yeah, to be appointed as the deputy for the Matthew Helpers Ministry, yeah. So Sister Yen will be deputizing Sister Kwai Fong for this uh, ministry. Matthew Helpers are the servers who do the collections and counting of the cash, yeah. So uh, they are not tax collectors but they are Matthew helpers, yeah? So, um, we want to thank, we want to thank uh, Sister Kim T for serving as the head of uh, beautification for the past many years. And it's not just the, the length of time that she has served, but um, really she has done so much, uh, so much uh, sacrifices. And there are little, little things that was done uh, without even us knowing, yeah? But uh, we really want to thank God for her, for beautifying our church, during Christmas, during play, so many things, yeah. So thank you, Sister Kim, and also Brother Adrian, yeah, Brother Adrian for uh, leading as the deputy of uh, Matthew Helpers as well. So uh, we want to thank Sister uh, Brother Adrian, yeah. So come, come, let's just uh, leaders, deacons, come forward and as we lay hands to pray for them. It's really an honor. It's always an honor and um, privilege whenever we are called to serve yeah so, um, so come let's just lay our hands and let's just stretch off our hands as we pray for them thank you lord father we want to thank you lord for sister angie and sister yen lord even as they take heed of your call lord to serve in this house oh lord father in the bible in joshua 25 14 says that as for me I will, and my house i will serve the lord lord truly indeed it is lord a privilege and honor for us lord 
to serve you in this house, O oh Lord. So, Father, even as they avail themselves, Lord, to serve you, Lord, may you um, provide, may you grant them, Lord, wisdom where they need, enable them, Lord, to overcome every challenge and issue, Lord, that they may encounter in their serving, Lord. Father, you will provide every resource, favor, creativity to help them, Lord, to accomplish the task and the responsibility, Lord, that they have. Give them, Lord, creativity in problem solving. And above all, Lord, may they always place their dependencies upon Holy Spirit, our counselor, our teacher, and our guide, Lord, in times of their need as they seek you, Lord. Father, may they walk in. Father, may we thank you, Lord, for the sacrifices and the love, Lord, that they have for the church, Lord. So, Lord, as they serve, we pray, Lord, for preservation for them and for their family. Provide every of their need. And they, may, and they will never be in lack in anything, Lord. Lord, may their serving in this ministry not a burden, but a joy, Lord. Let Jesus, Lord, be the source of their strength and their joy, Lord. Father, we thank you for them. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Amen. So now is the time for us to introduce our speaker and this will be the highlights of our service today and I still remember two years ago Pastor Victoria introduced our speaker as someone very handsome and tall I can't deny that so yeah and Reverend Raphael Schenker is a minister of God who have been serving God for almost 35 years if not more and together with her wife, Pamela, today, we welcome you, um, a, a gifted worship leader. And they founded the 11 Hour Redemption's Vision, which committed to come alongside local churches and also build them in biblical faith. And more to that, he is also an author of two inspirational books titled, you have, crossed, have You Crossed the Jordan? And why settle for crumbs when you are seated at the table? And I just finished this book yesterday. <laughs> Somehow I found it <laughs> in my house. And together with her wife, the minister locally and internationally, wherever the Spirit of the Lord will lead them. And let us welcome him. Praise God. Good morning, everyone. I like that picture over there. <laughs> anyway, um, God is good, amen? I still remember the last time I was here, probably several months ago, and I think I saw some new faces as I walked in, and, uh, and this is a very good sign, amen? It's a healthy church. <laughs> Praise God. Well, over the months, God, uh, let me just uh, introduce a little bit here and there. Over the months, God has really uh, put uh, new things into my heart. You know, ever since the COVID, uh, a lot of churches, a lot of Christians' lives were affected very badly, not just spiritually, but physically and uh, in their employments and things like that. It's lodged. Many of them were finding... Uh, difficulty in, in, in you know, regaining their part uh, spiritually and also in the natural. And I thank God that these books that God drove me and led me to write have been a great inspirational tool to help Christians regain their steps. And I brought these books uh, the times when I was here, but I'm sure that there are some of you who may not have got a copy of uh, these books. My first book, Have You Crossed Your Jordan, like what was mentioned. And this is a book about how we can live our, how we can live in the promised land. And that simply means, you know, crossing Jordan. Some people talk about crossing Jordan and most of the songs that we even sing are about dying and going to heaven. But uh, when I begin to do a study about these things, I found out that crossing Jordan is living your best life. Amen. Can I hear an amen for that? Amen. Living your best life. In other words, God saved us 
not to kill us in the wilderness, <laughs> but to take us to the promised land. Amen. So I did a study about these things and I found out there are seven explanations about what it means and it's very relevant in our walk, uh, the crisis that we go through, the temptations, the difficulties in, and how to overcome these things. And uh, it's very prominent, it's very uh, current in that many Christians are struggling with some of these issues like forgiveness. And I did a... <clears throat> good study about these things and I outline uh, how we can actually release forgiveness and what forgiveness is all about and that's only one of the chapters. So that's uh, this book here, Heavy Cross with Jordan. If you don't have a copy, please get one uh, for yourself or you can bless somebody else. Amen. And then this one is called, Why Settle for Crumbs When You're Seated at the Table? Now this one was released just before the covid and I had just enough of time to take it to different churches all over, uh, just a few months. And those that had a copy can testify that uh, there's no other way to live life as a Christian. It's repeated several times from the Old Testament and back in the New Testament, Paul quotes it several times, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. There's no other way that we can live, survive, thrive, overcome in this world without faith. And this book is all about the faith life. And uh, my, the main intention is to help Christians to apply. You see, a lot of times we just say the judge shall live by faith, but then we don't talk about principles and tools that will help us to apply these things. So this is one of the books that teach you about how faith operates and uh, it affects our vision, it affects you know, our actions, and how to get the word into your life, and, uh, and, and see the similarities between what Christ has done through the cross, the redemptive work, and how we can live out the full life. Again, this is again, you know, this, it's falling back to the first revelation, but it's different altogether. So these are just like two wings of a bird. So if you want to fly, you cannot just fly with one wing. Amen. You need two wings. Come on, tell your neighbor you need two wings. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. So that's, that's available there. Um, if you buy one copy, it's 30 ringgit. If you buy two copies, it's 50 ringgit. Okay, so this is, this is something that you should not miss. Now, another thing that I want to tell you over the months of development, sometime in August, the month of August, uh, I'll be starting off and launching a mini Bible school. And I'm starting off with a course called War Against Deception. So there are basically five modules in this mini Bible school that will cover the certificate and also diploma. But we're starting off with cert certificate first. And I'm trying to also speak with some of the bigger Bible schools to to accept these courses so that they can use it as a tool to further if they want to uh, pursue a degree and things like that. So we are all in all of these things are still in the the uh, preparation stage. So please pray along with me. Amen. I see that a lot of you all are praying a lot, calling even small children to pray. So <laughs> please do pray along with me because it's something new that I'm launching out. And but this has been brooding in my heart for more than 20 years. I knew very well, uh, very early in my, the call of God over my life that I'm supposed to teach and train. And so this is, uh, and things are lining up and just recently somebody came up to me and said, why don't you use our premises, you know, for this vision that you have about the Bible school. And so I knew that this was, this was God and God's timing. So please do pray along with me. And um, I'll also keep in touch with your pastor uh, to to talk more about this course. Maybe I don't have to do it there. I can, I can do it here. I don't know how it's going to work, but it's called War Against Deception. It, I'm, I touch about 12 uh, principles that the Christian must have, 12 principles, and it's the foundation of the Christian life. Amen. Can I invite everyone to, of you to be upstanding this morning? Thank God for what He's doing all over in this church, in my life, in different parts of uh, Malaysia as well, and I'm trusting that God will 
will establish His word. Amen. I mean, it's about time for the church to be a voice. How many of you think so? Enough is enough. I mean, amen. I mean, we have been hiding in the closet ever since the pandemic. We've been hiding in the closet. But it's time for us to rise up as a people, as a group, as a community. Amen. Come on, just lift your hands to God before I begin God's word. Thank you, Lord. This morning, we trust you. We trust, Lord, the work of the Holy Spirit in that, Lord God, you have indeed anointed us to become your witnesses. And Lord, I'm praying, God, that you will help us even in this end times and last days that you will truly raise up your church, raise up a people, raise up, Lord God, a body that will speak for you, that will live for you. And so, Father, as we look into your word this morning, help us, Lord, to begin to see how we can overcome some of the trials, temptations, tests that may be thrown against our lives, that we can move on with you in your plan, in your program. So, Father, we give you all the glory and testing and all the honor for what you're going to do this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated. This morning I have a message that will help us progress in the will of God. And one of the things that I often get asked about, often get uh, people requesting for prayer, is to know God's will. How many of you want to know God's will for your life? I'm sure many of us will put up our hands. What is God's will in that situation? What is God speaking and what is God telling me to do? So there are options, there are choices. But I want you to know that as Christians, we can move on with God in fulfilling all of His program for our lives. We don't have to, we don't have to fall on the wayside just because the circumstances are bad. And this is what has happened in so many Christians' lives that because they were facing hardship or a difficult time that they couldn't cope, that they feel they need to be just sidelined or God is not interested in their lives anymore. But I want to tell you that this is not true, that God truly cares for us until the very end. Amen. And so I want to take you to the writing of the Apostle Paul, but then we look into an Old Testament example because these are lessons that we can learn from their lives. And I want us to turn to the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, sorry, chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Now the Apostle Paul is writing about a particular group of people. In fact, much of their lives were filled up in the Old Testament uh, through the leadings of Moses. We have the book of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy concerning this group of people's lives. And who are they? They are none other than the children of Israel. So the Apostle Paul says, as he gleaned back and looked into their lives, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 11, he has this to say, Now all these things happened to them as examples, and they were written for our admonition upon whom the end of the ages have come. So who is he talking about the end of the ages have come? He's talking about the church. Amen? Ever since Jesus ascended to the right hand of the Father, he sent the Holy Spirit. And the Bible speaks about that as the last days. Remember? Peter the Apostle in Acts chapter 2 said, these are the last days until the time that God would take away or rapture the church. So we're living in these times that Paul calls, and Peter also says, we have come to the ends of the ages. Now, he's saying that this particular group of people, who is he talking about? The Israelites. Everyone say Israelites. The Israelites were a people that were led out from Egypt. Moses, their commander-in-chief, led a people out 
And the intention of God was to bring them into their promised land. Amen. Never was it in God's mind for anyone to perish in the wilderness. Never was it in God's mind. When God calls us out, He intends to bring us in. Can we repeat that phrase together? When God calls us out, come on as a church. When God calls us out, He intends to bring us in. That's also pertaining to our lives. When God called you out from your world, from your life as a heathen, so now you're called a Christian. Do you know that as a Christian you're called? Some people think that, oh, you've got to be uh, in the ministry to be called. No. Even as a Christian, you're called. You're called out of darkness. Amen? Into His marvelous light. Into His kingdom life. <coughs> so realize that God called us out of Egypt, in that sense. He called us out of this world system. And He has now a life for us to live. Not according to our way, not, not according to our wishes and our whims and fancies, but according to His commands. So the journeys of the children of Israel are a command from the Lord. We're going to look into one story and I'll show you that phrase. But just let me explain here a little bit so that we can begin to identify with this kind of a life. So realize that the children of Israel were given this opportunity to be led by the Spirit. How do you know that? Because the Scripture says that they were led by day and by night. How? Pillar of fire by night and pillar of cloud by day. That's the leading of the Holy Spirit for their lives. But today, in the New Covenant, when you and I embrace the gospel of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, the Scripture says the Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit. Amen. So this opportunity is given to every believer. Everyone say believer. Every Christian. The scripture goes on to say that you did not receive a spirit of fear again to bondage, but you receive a spirit from God crying out, Abba Father, hallelujah. Now what a privilege. Amen. Amen to have the Spirit of God in you today guiding you in life, guiding us in our paths, just like the children of Israel. But sadly, that generation that came out with Moses did not make it. The scripture says, for most of them, if you go on reading from verse 1 onwards, with most of them, God was not well pleased with. Why? The only way to please Father, the Father God and God's God's uh, God is by faith. You see, in life, you can either be a good example or a bad, bad example. Amen? So choose, choose you which one you want to be, a good example or a bad example. But these things were written for our admonition. Why? So that we don't have to make the same mistakes that they made. Now, the journeys of the children of Israel are a classic example of God's leadings for our lives as well. Now, none of us here will have to come out from Egypt, cross the wilderness, and go into our promised land. All right? I assure you of that. None of us will have to do that. Are you glad for that? But every one of us have a journey to make. Amen. We have a journey to make and that God brings us by His leadings to specific places. Like what happened in the past. Paul writes and he says, all these things were written for our admonition. What's that word admonition? That word admonition means warning, warning. It means Teaching, guidance, so that when we come to specific places like this, 
we will not do the same thing that the people of all did. Are you with me? So I want to take you to one example, one place where it is a very significant place and you will see even in the accounts of the prophets or the apostles when they wrote the scriptures, they always refer to this point. It was a place called Raphidim. And one thing about Raphidim, let's go to the book of Exodus chapter 17. Raphidim was known as the place where there was no water. Now, how many of you think that God will lead you always in life, always He leads you to a place where you will have all of your needs met, you'll always be happy, you'll be always joyful? How many of you think that? <laughs> I'm here to tell you that sometimes, in God's leadings for our lives, He leads us to places where there's a lack, where, where there's something that's lacking in certain areas. Why? Why does He do so? It's because he wants us in our Christian life to see the bigger picture. So let me just, let me, let me just read verse 1 to you and then we'll go on in this story. It says, Exodus 17 verse 1 says, Then all the congregation of the children of Israel set out on their journey from the wilderness of sin. Notice this phrase here. According to the commandment of the Lord. So nobody can tell me that when God led them to this place, it was not God's will. There was the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire leading them. They came to this place on purpose. They came to this place guided by God's will. And the scripture says here, but there was no water for the people to drink. Now, didn't God know that? And here were about six million people Rephidim actually means an open plain, open fields. So there was a lot of open space. They were basically exposed. But at the same time, they, there was, it was a place where there was no water. And that was something that they needed so much. And that was something that they really feared in their life. Now, how many of you know that when sometimes God leads us to a certain place to do a certain thing, to join a certain fellowship, to get involved with some employment, to get involved with some work, it's not always going to be easy with your flesh. And I guess that's the reason why many of, many of us are shunning from the will of God. When God speaks to us, when God tells us certain things, yes, there's the timing of God for these things, but at the same time, I want you to know that the first thing that that comes out of your life to confront this situation is your carnal mind. And many times your flesh will not like what you're about to do, what you're about to get involved with. Why is that so? Because God is leading you by His Spirit. Amen. Amen. God wants, to be, wants every one of his children to be led by the Spirit. But here was a moment where the children of Israel came to Rephidim. So we will have our Rephidim moments. I can assure you of that. In that when God brings you to a place where you don't understand what is happening, why, is, why are certain things, you see, the problem is this, that we always want to have control. Amen. We always want to have control over the situation. The moment something is out of control and we have to depend on God and the Holy Spirit. And this is where we have to do it by faith. We have to do it by faith. So here was a moment where there was no water. And you'll notice in verse 2 it says, The people contended, contended, contention with Moses and said, give us water that we may drink. And Moses said to them, why do you contend with me? Why do you tempt the Lord? Now, why did he say that? Why did he say, why do you tempt the Lord? Simply because this is not the first time. 
And in the first time, first few times, they saw the hand. Of, in fact, they came out from Egypt where they saw the hand of God in situations that protect them, protected them from disaster, provided for them at certain other locations. God's hand was involved. God was with them. They couldn't see it, but He was with them. And of course, through the miracles that He wrought, they had the privilege of seeing God's hand work. But yet when they came to Rephidim again, this was your problem. And if you begin to do a deeper study on this, you'll notice that even after 40 years, they had the same problem. What was your problem? Your problem was trusting God to meet this need in their life. So what was happening here? The people wanted immediate attention. Because they did not get immediate attention, their flesh was hurt. And so the first thing that rose up in their lives was contention, strife. They were in opposition against what? Against the will of God for that situation. Now, how many of us, when we encounter situations like this, and so many times what happens is that we give in to the work of the flesh and allow strife. You see, when strife, contention, and murmurings and complainings begin to come into the picture, what's, happen is, what's going to happen is this. You're going to be driven away from the will of God. And I guess for the children of Israel, it happened for them, and many of them did not progress in God's plan. It's either living by faith, or living in the flesh. Come on, tell your neighbor that. It's either living by faith or living in the flesh. If you want to live by faith, you have to take up the cross. And what's that cross? It's not the cross of Jesus. Nobody can take the cross of Jesus. Jesus carried his own cross. And one sacrifice was sufficient. It was enough to pave the way for us. But I want you to know that in our daily lives, we will have to carry the cross. And the cross is simply situations, conditions, trials, testings, temptations that would want to project your flesh <coughs> so that your flesh can remain. You see, that's why they said, Moses, give us water or we will kill you. That's how sometimes you react towards God. God, you don't give me my way, I'm not going to follow you. I'm not going to be led by your spirit. The flesh always cries out for its own way. Galatians tells us, for the spirit lusted against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit. Walk in the spirit and you shall not Fulfill the lust of the flesh. It's as simple as that. It's either spirit or the flesh. It's either faith or fear. So let me just explain here what's happening. When God leads us in a certain place <coughs> to do a certain thing, to get involved with a certain ministry, to get involved with a certain employment, to go to a certain location, to fulfill a certain phase of your ministry or your life or your work, whatever it is, remember this. There are three things that he wants you to get. Three things. That's why he leads us to places like Rafidim. Number one, he wants you to know him. Amen? He wants you to get a revelation of who he is. And in this story, we're going to find out who Jesus was at Rafidim. Who was, who was God at Rafidim? And that is so vital because do you know that in our Christian faith, in our Christian life, it is not just monotonous. It is not just one revelation, Jesus is my Savior, my Lord, He died for me on the cross and that's it. And then you go on living until you leave this world. It's not that. It's a journey that God takes you so that He can build your understanding about Him. Who He is. What is it to you? See, okay, so the first one is who he is. Who is God? 
to me in that situation. So you gain an understanding about Jesus, about God, that aspect about Him in your life. And secondly, when you have that, you will begin to know who you are. Amen. And this is so vital. Do you know that one of the greatest problems, even in Christians' lives today, is not knowing who they are. That's why I wrote about this book, Why Settle for Crumbs When You're Seated at the Table. This book is about defining who God made us to be. And this is so vital. Because when you begin to be rooted and grounded in these truths, you begin to handle situations differently. Amen. Can I hear an amen for that? No more in the flesh. No more like how the children of Israel handled, handled that situation. They were so angry and upset with Moses, they wanted to kill him and do away with the leadings of God for their lives. But listen, when you build an understanding about who God is, that will give you an understanding about who you are. And thirdly, the third thing is this, that you will begin to know what you should do. What you should do. So as we go on reading this story, we find... People were pressing against Moses. They wanted to snuff out the life of God of, out of him. They did not want the way of Moses or the way of God. They wanted their way. I don't know whether they sang the song, I did it my way or not. <laughs> but listen, here was a moment where Moses was so pressed. He went to God in prayer. He said, God, what should I do? What should I do in this situation? How can I handle the situation? God said, go on and I lead you to a rock, rock called Horeb. Now, Horeb again is a place of revelation. Uh, later on, just soon after this moment, after Rephidim, they come to Horeb and that was where Moses got the commandments, the Ten Commandments and many of the laws. But listen, this was the moment where God wanted to show himself to the people. He wanted to reveal to the people who he was at that moment and what they can be and what they can do. This is what the Christian life is, people of God. It's not just celebrating God and what he can do, but in that revelation, you get to know yourself. You get to know what you can do and what you can be and the will of God for your life. Hallelujah. Amen. So he goes up to Horeb, the rock, and then the Bible tells us that he struck. He struck the rock. And what happened in that story? Can someone tell me? Water gushed out. Water gushed out. Do you know that Paul, in his writings, say that that moment when this happened was actually a spiritual lesson. Let's go again to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I want us to see this because today we have the full revelation of God. We have Genesis right up to Reve uh, the book of Revelations. We have every one of those recordings for us to glean from, for us to learn, so that we will be admonished. Learn not to make the same kind of mistakes. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Let's pick up from verse 4. It says, And they all drank the same spiritual drink. You see that there? They all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock. Is that capital in your Bible? Rock? Capital R. And who is that? It says here that the rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. Of course, that literal rock, rock was not Christ, but Jesus was present. Hallelujah. Amen. In all of their journeys, they could not see him. They could not feel him. They didn't know what was God doing. They were in positions where there was weakness. There was lack. They were fearing for their lives. But listen, Jesus was with them. Amen. Hallelujah. And notice here it says they drank from the same spiritual drink. In other words, this water that they drank was a reminder, was going to be a lesson in their future and future generations. 
that if they would come to a place like this where the need was so obvious, the need was so strong for the flesh to be ministered to. Of course, everybody needs to drink water, amen? We need water for sustenance. But listen, when God brings you to a place of thirst, to a, to a place where you feel that you have to have this need met, then you'll be happy. <coughs> you have to have this need met, then you'll be satisfied in the flesh. But I want you to know that there's a greater picture behind it. There's a greater purpose. When God brings you to such places like this, He wants you to know that First of all, He is your sufficiency. Amen. He is your sufficiency. You know, a lot of people say, you know, if, if I have this need met, then I can be a better person. I can be, if I, if I have this, this position, if I have this, <laughs> if I'm married to this person or that person, if I have this and that, then I'll be contented, I'll be happy. But it's, it doesn't work that way. It works when you Drink, spiritual drink. What's that? Let's turn to the book of John. Okay, so we found out that Jesus was present. The rock was with them. Amen? Now in John, let's turn to the gospel of John, chapter 7. John chapter 7. And let's read from verse 37. Now, Jesus is saying this. Now, of course, this is a prophetic passage. This is not about his day even. This was going to be the day of the church, the day when he would come in his power, in his mind. It says in verse 37, On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone, what's that word? Thirst. If anyone thirst." Let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not given because Jesus was not glorified. Now, this is speaking about our generation, our era, the church age. Ever since the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit. We just celebrated, we just celebrated the day of Pentecost, right? Pentecostal church. And sometimes we, we, we give ourselves labels. Oh, I'm Pentecostal. Or I'm non Pentecostal. But listen, this experience is for anyone who thirsts. Amen? For every Christian, for every believer. We need to understand that the physical needs in life does not get a real solution in life. We saw that in the lives of the children of Israel. God was bringing this into the picture. Listen, when you are thirsty, that spiritual need in your life has to be met and it cannot be met by any physical thing in this world. Amen. Can I hear an amen for that? We need Jesus. We need Jesus. Whatever the situation is, we need the power, the presence of the Holy Spirit to just fill that void. It's a void that only God can fill in your life. We run to and fro, we go here and there, we do every other thing just to seek for that need to be met. But I want you to, see, want, want you to know this, that that need is only met in Jesus. Amen. It's met in Jesus. When He sent the Holy Spirit to baptize us, to fill us, to cause us to be contented, that's the work that only God can do. Nothing in this world can do it for you. And the source is Jesus. And you've got to come to Him. Amen. So they had the rivers of living water. It was a picture of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So regardless of the denomination that you go, that you came from and things like that, I want you to know that there is a thing, such a thing called the baptism of the Holy Spirit that He wants to immerse you. He wants to fill you so much. 
In fact, it's a command in the Bible. It says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's not only for Pentecostals or for the main, uh, not for the mainline church and things like that. It's for every Christian. And who is going to do it for us? Jesus. Amen? And how is he going to do it for us? It's by the Holy Spirit. So God wants to quench your thirst. Come on, tell your neighbor this. God wants to quench your thirst. And begin to tell your other neighbor, it's a spiritual thirst. Amen. So many times we are crying out in the natural, we are crying out for this and for that, but actually it's a spiritual thirst. And you need Jesus. Only Jesus can help you. Only the Holy Spirit can fill you. Hallelujah. Amen. So whatever you're going through in life, remember this, that God has made a way of escape. Hallelujah. Go back again to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. In 1 Corinthians 10, Paul, the apostle, is not finished yet. You read verse 11. All these things were written for our admonition. They happen as an example. But look at verse 13. Verse 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to men. Why has it not overtaken us? In other words, he's saying here, whatever you can go through in life is not something that's going to be of, of surprise to us. Why? Because it happened to them. Amen? It happened to them. It's, it's all. The devil has got no new tricks. Amen? The devil has got no new tricks. The same old devil has been around. When he was there, he's still here. Listen, he wants to still tempt you. He still wants to test you in that situation where you either walk by faith or walk by uh, sight. You either walk in the spirit or you walk in the flesh. The word says here, the word says here, these things have been handled in the past and he gives us the ability, but more than that, he says here, God is faithful, amen? God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape. Hallelujah, amen. I want you to know that our God is a deliverer. Amen. amen. Our God is wanting to help us overcome in life. And this is what the Christian faith is all about. We are, we are born to be overcomers. To apply the faith that God has given us, the word, the instructions, so that we can become overcomers. Hallelujah. Amen. It can help progress in the plans of God, in the will of God. Amen. The different stages. And this is what the Christian life is, in that he takes us to different stages. Different stages. Different stages. And that he shows us. He guides us. He anoints us. He helps us fulfill his will. Amen? For our lives. So I hope that you benefited from, from this study this morning. It's a short one. But it's a series actually. I did a two-part message. You can go to the YouTube 11th Hour Redemptive Vision and you can get part one and part two. And I share about how we can learn from God's leadings from our lives. All right? So you can view the full message there. And these are tools that we need in life. Amen? That we can take to understand that the greatest need that we can ever have is not a physical need, it's a spiritual need. Come on, let's all be upstanding this morning. Hallelujah. Can I invite the musician, the worship leader, the musicians? And it's so coinciding that we just celebrated the Feast of Pentecost and it's the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So it's not, I say, I say this very often, Pentecost is not an event, it's an experience. Amen. 
Pentecost is not an event, it's an experience. And that God wants, to, wants us, every child of God, to experience Him. Experience. When we have Him fill our lives, and you'll find that your fears are driven away, your troubles and your pains, and even your prayer life changes. Your prayer life changes. In fact, when you are filled with the Spirit, He helps you to navigate in your prayers. He says, likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. We don't know what to pray as we ought to, but the Spirit Himself helps us make intercession. Amen. So, regardless of what you're going through today, your need is, Lord, Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. I want the Holy Spirit to fill my life. Because when you have the Spirit of God, you have wisdom. You have strength. You have His ability to maneuver, to come out, and to work things out in your life. Amen. So, Let's give this time a few minutes here for the work of the Holy Spirit. I'm sure that many of us will be ministered to this morning. And do you want to say the goodness of God? Let's think about the goodness of God. God is faithful. Amen. He is good. He's a good God. We can trust, we can rely on Him. We can love Him. place of lack, it's a place of need, it's a place where you are crying out for answers, 
It's a place where you have your own ideas, your conception about what you need to do. But the answer is simply this. Come to Jesus. Amen. If any man thirsts, let him come to me and drink. We need the Holy Spirit. So whatever your needs can be in the physical, whatever it can be, I want you to know that God wants to fill you. Just lift up your hands to Him this morning. Oh, hallelujah. In your own way, in your own way, just talk to Him. Talk to Him. Hallelujah. Lord, I need you, Lord. I need your presence. I need your anointing. You are the baptizer of the Holy Spirit. You're the one who sends the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit over my life. And I need you, Lord. Those of you who need further ministry, you can leave your seats, you can come to the front as the musicians begin to sing that song again. The goodness of God. All right? In prayer, just come. All my life, you have been faithful. Take this as a river. Consider this a river of God. And that you have come to drink. Amen. Don't be shy. You can't do this outside. You can only do this here. Amen. You need more of the Holy Spirit in your life. You need God to give you a breakthrough. You need a liberation of certain habits or certain things that drag you down in life. You need a breakthrough. Just leave your seats. Come on. Let's let's trust God. Let's believe God for this moment. Hallelujah. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life. All my life. All my life you have been faithful. Come on, saints. This is your moment. All my life you have been we need the Holy Spirit. We need the anointing of God. Every breath that I Thank you, Lord. Oh, I will see of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. The goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Come church, for those of you who need a touch from the Lord, can I just invite you to come forward? Come to the altar. The altar is still open. Please come. Now living in God's will is to live by faith. Live in knowing your identity in Christ. Live for Christ. And live with dependency in the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Pastor Raphael, for bringing us the fresh manner of God this morning. Come, let's just, as we close, I want to give you these benedictions for all of us. Now, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and give you grace. The Lord turn His face towards you and give you grace, peace. Now, love God, love others, and share the gospel. Amen. God bless you.
My faith will stand 